Assalamu alaikum, everybody, and peace be with you all. Welcome to episode six of Do 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 Ask a Muslim with me, your friendly neighborhood Muslim hostess who attempts to answer all of your questions about Islam. Um, but not today, <laughs> because today um, I'm actually not going to be doing the regular format that I use for my videos. Um, this is going to be more of a personal video blog entry than a question and answer video uh, like I tend to usually do. And uh, the topic that I'm actually going to cover today is one that is very close to my heart. And that is the issues of the convert to Islam. Um, and I guess more specifically the issues of the female convert to Islam because that's what I know most about being that I am one. But um, something I've noticed over the years, um, I've been involved in a lot of online communities where I have been uh, involved in discussing and debating topics regarding Islam. I've been doing this for years, like five or six years, um, you know, and it never fails that as soon as a person realizes that you're a Muslim convert, their entire attitude towards everything that you have to say changes. I find it very frustrated, uh, frustrating. And it's not all, all people at all, but you know, as a general rule, I'd say 50% of people automatically don't take you seriously anymore. And those same people um, that, you know, suddenly will only accept your knowledge at a discounted value are the same people that automatically start um, making assumptions about the type of person that you must be and the type of female you must be. Um, and I, I get this all the time and I get it on YouTube as well where people will, you know, look at me and say, Muslim convert, she's a chick, she must be submissive, she must be subservient, she must be ignorant, she must be uneducated, naive, stupid. I've gotten all of those on numerous occasions. As a matter of fact, one user on YouTube um, uh, commented on one of my videos calling me all of those, plus like another dozen uh, things that I just don't really think apply to me. But people like to make that general assumption that if you are a convert to Islam and you're a girl, or a woman, as I happen to be, um, you suddenly uh, have to be a certain type of person. And I find that absolutely ridiculous. You know, people want to uh, sleep better at night, I guess, and they, they don't understand why somebody would actually choose of their own free will to accept Islam into their hearts and be happy with it. And not only do people accuse you of having, you know, these uh, lapses in character, and these flaws in your character, um, they also accuse you of other reasoning for wanting to convert to Islam. And I'll tell you a few of those ones that I have personally experienced. And that is the accusations of, you know, oh, you must be rebellious. You became Muslim to rebel against society. Um, you like playing dress up which I guess um, to some people hijab is dress up, but I don't view it that way. Um, other people have accused me of converting because I like that Islam is exotic, and I guess that's the Orient, uh, Orientalist view of Islam, which I don't hold. Um, and then there is, uh, you know, the people that, and this happens all the time, that will accuse you of converting because your husband and there are different variations of the husband reasoning. Uh, one being that uh, the man you're dating won't marry you unless you became Muslim, so you converted. Then there's the, you married a Muslim guy and he started beating you uh, and he would only stop if you converted. Um, all of these uh, interesting uh, accusations. And I, I find it funny because uh, I think people attack me um, as much as they do because I'm actually none of these things. Um, I'm actually a little bit aggressive, not submissive. Um, I'm, you know, relatively well educated. Um, I'm intelligent, I like to think. Um, and I'm not married. Uh, my husband isn't telling me what to do. And despite some people's accusations, he's not hiding in the corner, uh, you know, telling me what to say. Um, I have a mind of my own. And uh, I would really appreciate it if people would start to understanding that. But of course, again, I understand that a lot of people, there's a psychology behind this 
where people can't accept that somebody would, of their own free will, accept Islam because they have so many preconceived notions uh, and false preconceived notions at that about what Islam stands for. So that's a challenge all the time. And in response to the whole entire accusation that, you know, oh, you know, you just wanted to rebel um, against society and be different, um, if converting to Islam was some kind of rebellious hobby of mine, um, I probably would have found an easier hobby uh, after all these years because being Muslim uh, when your entire family uh, is not is very difficult. Um, let me tell you, um, my family and I, uh, my immediate family, uh, I just told them I was Muslim two or three months ago. I actually uh, moved out of the house, which is very strange for an Italian Roman Catholic, uh, let alone uh, what I am now. I moved out of the house before I was married, much to, to the dismay of my family. I was the only person who's ever done it. Uh, I left the house, um, I left the country, and I kind of ran away and secluded myself so I could become um, more confident in my religion so I would feel confident to tell my parents that I was Muslim because I was terrified that they would disown me um, and on a different scale I was terrified of disappointing them and it was a very difficult thing to have to experience um, and I love my family very much and I'm so happy you know that all of my concerns were unfounded because when I told my mother that I was Muslim, all she had to tell me was that she loved me and that she trusted me and she knew I was smart and she knew that she raised me to be independent and intelligent and she knew that I would make the right decision for myself. And uh, I love her for that. By the way, I'm one of the, the lucky ones. Alhamdulillah, I'm one of the lucky ones because I know a few sisters and a couple of brothers that have been disowned by their family or their family refuses to speak to them until they revert back to whatever faith they were uh, a part of before they embraced Islam. It's very difficult. And then there's the friends, you know. Uh, personally, I lost at least a dozen friends um, when I became Muslim. And I guess in a way it's, it's okay, it's a good thing. We had different aspirations in life anyways and they weren't the best influences and they weren't really interested in talking with me anymore because I had changed so considerably when I embraced Islam. But that's also very difficult because it's, um, it's a process. It's, it's not that, for me at least, it wasn't that they just dropped me like a bad habit. It was like this progressive, drawn-out, painful experience where the phone calls became less and the invites to go out became less. And you're watching it happen and you know why it's happening and you can't do anything about it. And it's painful. And it was very difficult for me. Um, being, you know, a convert to Islam, everything kind of changes in your life and it's, it's, it's a huge commitment. You know, your, your diet changes. You know, it's so hard to go over to my grandmother's sometimes for dinner because she'll make pork roast, you know, and that's the main course. So I'm sitting there nibbling on salad and uh, people are looking at you like, oh, Linda, are you on a diet? And I'm like, no, do I need to be on one? And it's like a joke, you know, but none of them understand. I'm lucky that my, my mother now will, you know, specifically cater my meals uh, to the halal side uh, when I'm over for dinner. So alhamdulillah for that. But um, that's just a little bit of an inside peek to what it is to be a convert to Islam. Anybody who thinks that the Muslim convert converts out of spite or ignorance or lack of education is really mistaken because if there was any doubt in my mind that this was the right path for me, I would not put myself through this type of trial and tribulation. And it's an everyday battle. But alhamdulillah, I have my faith. And I'm very grateful for that. So I hope that that was a little 
interesting for some of you, and if not, I apologize, but I will be back to the normal format in my next video, inshallah. Uh, so peace be with you all, and have an excellent night.